What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another PS4 video. So Gold Hen version 2.0 was just released by Sistro not too long ago, and it adds a whole bunch of extra functionality for your jailbroken PS4, which are really going to make a big difference, especially when it comes to loading additional payloads on your PS4. So we're going to be covering that here, doing a general overview of some of the changes. Normally I don't cover, you know, Gold Hen updates, mainly because not much or well things do change obviously there are improvements but a lot of it is sort of stuff that happens in the background that you're not really going to notice from an end user perspective for the most part it's just going to make things a bit more convenient but this version of gold hen actually adds some pretty big changes that you are definitely going to take note of uh, so i thought it's worth covering here in this video so let's go ahead and take a look so First thing we're going to do is head on over to our internet browser and load up our jailbreak uh, to load Gold Hen. So we're going to obviously load up our WebKit exploit, then load our jailbreak as long as it doesn't crash. And providing you're able to actually load the jailbreak, you'll then be able to run Gold Hen version 2.0. Now, this payload should have been added to all of the major WebKit hosts by now. So any exploit host you go to that's being regularly updated and maintained should have the gold hen 2.0 version now available so run that payload and you'll have gold hen version 2.0 running so gold hen as you probably know its main purpose is the homebrew enabler which allows you to run your fake package files it's sort of the main uh, jailbreak essentially allowing you to run unsigned code and then obviously you have additional features for example if we head into settings Gold Hen 2.0 adds this additional option in the settings now, uh, which gives you a bunch of additional features and information. So this is probably a collaboration with OSM, who created the uh, the Orbis toolbox, and he was the first one to really integrate these additional settings menus uh, into the PS4. So um, I'm sure that was a kind of collaboration there. So if we go into Gold Hen, we can then go to the About section and About Gold Hen. And this gives you all of the different changes that have been added. So as you can see, there's the obvious stuff, the homebrew enabler, the debug settings so that you can actually install your fake package files. You've got VR support, remote package install, rest mode support. Now, the majority of this stuff was all available in version 1.1 as well. Although this new version probably has some stability improvements for some of this stuff as well. But there has been a few additional changes here that were not in the previous version. For example you have the CE30391-6 error CMOS fix uh, right at the bottom. And that is a fix for the dead CMOS battery issue. Now, this was a big issue a while ago um, with the PS4. Obviously, Sony actually fixed this issue where if your CMOS battery died in your PS4, then you couldn't run any of your games. Now, Sony fixed it in 9.00, but obviously... If you're on a previous firmware, which you will be if you're on a jailbroken PS4, like 7.55 or lower, then you still have this issue if your CMOS battery dies. Now, it was a bit blown out of proportion for jailbroken PS4s because it's not too much of an issue because even with the older version of Gold Hen, you could still run your fake package files even with a dead CMOS battery. So I assume because this is an actual error fix, it fixes the actual error then it should allow you to run your retail games as well now with Gold Hen 2.0 uh, if you have a dead CMOS battery. It's still not what I would consider a permanent fix for the issue. A permanent fix for the issue would be a uh, updated kernel clock payload that allows you to update the kernel clock um, and then you could put a new CMOS battery in, update the kernel clock and then the, the issue would be properly fixed. But obviously because we don't have that yet, this is a good sort of in between so as long as you're running gold hen then you should be able to run your games and you shouldn't have any issues if your cmos battery is dead yeah that's a huge improvement the cmos battery issue really is not that big of a deal especially now uh, with this new version of gold hen so that's a nice addition added right there of course the other big addition is this bin loader server bin loader server on port 9090 now this is actually a pretty big deal it is an experimental feature so there are probably going to be some issues with it, but this actually is a pretty huge deal for jailbroken PS4s and for making things a lot more convenient. So for example, what you can now do is if we head back in here and we enable this bin loader server, 
it says the bin loader is now listening on port 9090. So this allows us to inject payloads to the PS4 without having to go through the WebKit exploits. So normally, you if you you know run Gold Hen as you normally would, you've jailbroken your system, you've got Gold Hen running, and then you want to load another payload. Maybe you want to run the app dumper or the kernel dumper um, or some other payload. So in order to do that, you would have to go back into the WebKit exploit go through all the out of memory errors that you get with the WebKit exploit until you can finally get on there. That was the issue beforehand. This kind of eliminates that. So you'll still need to go through the WebKit exploit and the jailbreak to run Gold Hen. But once you've ran Gold Hen, any additional payloads you want to run after that, you'll be able to run using this bin loader server without having to go back through the WebKit exploit. And there's two methods of doing this as well. There's the TCP method and the HTTP POST method. So if we look at the TCP method first, all I have to do if I switch over to the computer can run a payload injector like netcat GUI and I can drag in a payload that I want to do. So let's just do the kernel dumper uh, which just dumps the kernel to a USB drive and then you want to set the port number to 9090. By default it will be on like 9020 or 9021 which is the normal ports for the bin loaders in the WebKit or in the exploit, but in this case, it's 9090. And obviously you enter your PS4's IP address, and then you just inject the payload by clicking inject payload. And when you do that, you see it says on the PS4, the payload was received from my computer's IP address, and then it runs the payload. So I no longer have to go through the WebKit in order to load it. Now, yeah, I already have a dump of my kernel on the USB, so it's not gonna bother dumping it again. But as you can see, the payload ran there no problem, and it was pretty quick. Plus, you can chain load payloads. So I just ran one payload. For example, let's just grab another payload like the, um, I don't know, disable updates payload. Throw that one in, click inject payload, and boom, there you go. It loads the next one. So yeah, super, super convenient that this is now an option. And that's just the TCP method, which is for injecting payloads from your computer or your phone, for example. But obviously you could do this through the HTTP POST method as well. And there's already one exploit host set up using this method by uh, NASCII. But obviously there'll be more, I'm sure, pretty soon. Which is essentially you'll be able to go into an exploit host and load a payload. Once you've got Gold Hen running and you've got this enable bin loader server running, then you'll be able to go to a website that has the payloads and just load the payloads that way without going through the WebKit exploits. So even though you're going through a website to load the payloads, you'll not have to go through the WebKit exploit and get all those out of memory errors. So one of the sites that's already exists uh, from NASCII uh, is this one right here. So if we load this up, ps4exploit.rf.gd. So if I go on here, I don't know why it's installing the offline cache a second time. Uh, maybe that's a bug, I don't know. But anyway, as you can see, we can head on here and we've got all of the payloads right here. So I can just select a payload that I want. So I don't know, let's just do uh, PS4 debug or maybe we'll just do disable updates again. We don't wanna run too many payloads that might interfere with each other. So yeah, we'll just run disable updates and please wait, payload received. And there we go, that loads the payload, disabled updates. So yeah, there you go. So I didn't have to go through all the out of memory errors because I've already loaded the jailbreak and this website is hosting the payloads, but it's doing it over the HTTP post method or post mode to the bin loader here on Gold Hen instead of going through the normal WebKit exploit to load the payload. So I was able to just load it no problem and I could load another payload uh, like, you know, let's just do disable updates again, for example. And there you go, it does the next payload again, no problem as well. So it can you can just load multiple payloads one after the other without having to go through the WebKit exploit. Yeah, that's gonna make things super convenient for loading payloads now. Uh, that's a huge improvement over the way that we had to do it before. So that is an awesome feature added there by Sistro. Now, uh, the other thing is obviously we have the FTP server, which was always built into Gold Hen from like version 1.0 or 1.1. Yeah, now you have to enable it through this option. So it will not enable the FTP server by default. You'll have to go into the settings here and select this option to enable the FTP server. Whereas before with 1.1, you would just run the payload and then the FTP server would automatically start running. 
as long as you were connected to your network. So this is one change that I'm not really a big fan of because whenever you restart your PS4 and then load Gold Hen up a second time, uh, these options will no longer be enabled, even if you enabled them the last time you were on Gold Hen. So it doesn't save your selection. So, you know, I was kind of hoping that would be an option given the fact that, you know, this incorporates stuff from OSM, OSM's Orbis Toolbox. And in the Orbis Toolbox, there was an option to save any of your changes to an INI file so that the next time you loaded the Orbis Toolbox, it would actually remember your settings by reading it from that INI file that was stored on your hard drive. But this does not do that. So maybe that's a change that could be added in a future update for Gold Hen or perhaps there is a valid reason why that's not possible in this case. So we'll just have to wait and see. That's one change that I'm not super thrilled about is having to go into the settings every single time and re-enabling the FTP server whenever I want to use it instead of it just automatically being enabled. But um, I can see why it would be useful to have the option to enable or disable it. So yeah, that is a another change right there. And then you've also got the package installer. This is just a shortcut to the package installer in the debug settings where you normally have to go into uh, debug settings game package installer to install a package file from a USB drive. Well, now you can just go to gold hen package installer and get there quicker. So yeah, those are the kind of main changes that have been added to gold hen. Obviously there's additional changes that have been added for developers that are not really mentioned. Just some improvements in the back end that will be useful for developers. I know there was an issue uh, that Lightning Mods was having with the homebrew store that's that a fix has been incorporated in Gold Hen version 2.0 for something in there. Um, Alizev's homebrew uh, payload loader, which I'll be going into detail on in another video. I'll have a dedicated video on that soon. But uh, that requires this Gold Hen bin loader as well. So now there's more homebrew apps that will be able to actually take advantage of some of these additional features that have been added into Gold Hen. So yeah, it's good for developers as well. So yeah, anyway, great work by Sistro on Gold Hen version 2.0. And uh, obviously everybody else who was involved in this in some degree, all the other developers. This is really going to make things a lot easier, a lot more convenient, especially for loading payloads. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.